when we look at the hybridization of something like PF3, phosphorus trifluoride, what we're trying to do is we're trying to look at, from the perspective of the central phosphorus atom here, how have the orbitals, the atomic orbitals of the phosphorus, how have they mixed to form hybrid orbitals? And then those orbitals, how do they overlap with atoms like the fluorines here? In short, for PF3, the hybridization is sp3. And here's how we get this, two simple ways. First, we could look at the number of sigma bonds and lone pairs. Sigma bonds are single bonds. We have one, two, three, and then we have this lone pair on the phosphorus. So one, two, three, four, that gives us sp3 hybridization. That's one way to do it. The other way is we can look at the steric number. The steric number is the number of electron domains or electron regions around the phosphorus. We have these atoms here, one, two, three, and then we have a lone pair. So we have a steric number of four, again, sp3 hybridization. So these are two quick methods you can figure out hybridization from molecules. There are some exceptions, and there's a link in the description to those exceptions. And again, what we're doing, we're looking at how the atomic orbitals of that phosphorus atom, how they've mixed, and then how they overlap with the orbitals of the fluorine atom. So the hybridization, that results in a lower energy and a more stable molecule. This is Dr. B with the hybridization for PF3, phosphorus trifluoride. Thanks for watching.